To open up this video, I'm going to tell you a very sad story. And what that sad story is going to do is it's going to open up a lot of harsh truths of reality that a lot of us ignore on a day-to-day -day basis. And then I'm going to follow up with strategies on how to get out of debt and stay out of debt. Hey, what's up? My name is Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can better yourself every single day and live life on your own terms. Let's get into this video. The question how to get out of debt is searched over 12,000 times every single month. And that's really not that much when you compare it to the amount of times that how to save money was searched, which is over 90,000 times each month. And that makes me wonder why. But before we can even get to that, we have to ask ourselves, how did I get into debt in the first place? When I first graduated from college, I really had to get real with myself and ask, why am I $30,000 in debt? Was it worth it? For some of us, it's student loans. For some of us, it's credit cards. Maybe it's your house. Maybe it's your car. Maybe it's all the above for you. But no matter how you look at it, there is a reason that you're in debt. And it's not enough just to look at what form of debt you're in. That's not gonna tell the full story. If you wanna get out of debt and stay out of debt, you've gotta take a deeper look. The good thing for you is you don't have to do any of that because I've already done the work for you. There's one thing that's responsible for you being in debt besides yourself, and that's society's overly dramatized and false interpretation of what life is supposed to look like. And by society, I mean the vast majority of people who influence the entire world, your parents, your friends, your siblings, your teachers. It starts at a very young age when we first hear about the American dream, the house on the white picket fence, the happily ever after story. You hear about all of these and you've heard some variation if not all three of these, and what you understand is this, that it's all subjective and completely based on your own opinion. Yet, we're influenced on exactly what we need to do to achieve this hopeful, blissful dream so that we can one day live it. Well, eventually, the thoughts of those who influence us become our own. And before we know it, any hopes and dreams that we have for ourselves are lost. And other people's dreams, society's dreams, become our own. And you'd be surprised at the emotional attachment that the average person builds with this dream because, ironically, this is the same exact dream that leaves us in debt. I want you to imagine this for a second. Imagine being so emotionally attached to a dream that you're willing to go far into debt for it. Imagine being so emotionally attached to a dream that you're willing to put years and years of your life pushing for this goal, pushing to achieve this dream. And then imagine doing this, doing all of this work with no guarantees. Guess what? You've just pictured the reality of over 90% of the entire world. If you take a look around, you'll find that just about every single person around you is in debt. The problem with this, and this really boils my blood, is the fact that the same society that gives you an oddly specific dream that just so happens to cause debt is the exact same society that puts a stigma around debt. And that oddly specific dream starts right after high school, and that's go to school, again, get a degree, get a good job, not just any job, a good job. And by good job, I mean a job that pays over 50 grand a year. Get married, get promoted, get a house, have kids, grow old, retire with millions, and die. In that exact order. At least that was the order that I was given, you know what I'm saying? You might have had a different order, but you know, you can comment that down below if you had a different order than I did. And all that sounds good, all because of something that was given to us in a movie that's starting to feel more and more like a real life documentary even in 2021. And that's the blue pill, the pill that causes you to walk around throughout life believing everything you want to hear, failing to see what's really going on because you've decided to live a life full of blissful ignorance as life literally decides to manhandle you and punch you in the face. And because the emotional attachment to the blue pill dream and view of life is so strong, you live truly believing that what you're going through is normal. And what I'm about to give you is the red pill, the pill that opens your eyes to reality so that you can see life for what it really is. And the movie I'm referring to is The Matrix, by the way. But look, if this resonates with you as you go along this video, make sure you like and share this video and don't forget to subscribe. You've done it all. You did everything right. And where did they get you? Where does going to school usually get you? Student loan debt in most cases, right? And hey, look, that's okay if you find a really good job that you enjoy doing. That's how it's supposed to be. But check this out. I've seen people get full rides to a school, but because it wasn't their dream school, they turned down a full ride. They turned down going to school for free for student loans, all for a school name. 
And most of the time it's because they truly believe that having that school name under their belt is going to get them a better, higher paying job. Okay, now I want you to imagine this. Imagine going 30K in debt instead of having zero debt so that you can maybe make an extra $10,000 a year after graduation only to get the job, but instead of getting an extra $10,000, you only get an extra $5,000. And then you find that the cost of living is much more expensive where you live, and that's the only reason you're getting that $5,000 extra. Imagine being in this situation knowing that no one ever taught you about the cost of living, much less how much longer it's actually gonna take for you to pay off your student loans in addition to higher gas prices, higher rent, higher food, higher everything. And remember, society gave you a blue pill, so you firmly believe that what you're going through is normal, like it's supposed to happen. And just for fun, let's say that no one's ever educated you on the dangers of spending more money than you actually have on swiping your credit cards, and they definitely haven't taught you about the sky-high interest rates of credit cards. So imagine you're just swiping and swiping. You go through day-to-day -day life just mindlessly swiping your credit card, not even realizing that you forgot to make a payment last month, and now you have late fees. But that's okay because I have the money for it, but I'm going to wait till my next paycheck so I can make sure I have more money to myself. Not even realizing that interest is still going up and up and up on everything you owe. But but you don't worry about that. You just you, you keep going about your day. Now you're ordering takeout because you're like, man, I don't feel like going home and cooking. I'm going to get me some takeout. You just had a long week at work, it's Friday, all you want to do is decompress, get some drinks, maybe go to the mall, buy yourself something nice with money that you don't have, and you know, the, the cycle continues every single weekend. And, and back to my point from the beginning, there's way more people searching how to save money than how to get out of debt every single month, and I think it's because of the fact that we already know how to get out of debt. You simply pay off the required amount that's left in your balance. But you see, with debt comes interest rates. And with interest rates, that means your debt is basically growing. And because your debt is growing, you slowly realize that, man, if I'm going to get out of debt in a somewhat timely manner, I'm either going to need to make more money or save more money. And guess what? It's much easier for most people to start saving money than it is to make more money. Now, when I first started learning how to save money, the first thing I realized was that it was 99% discipline, which most people don't have. And the reason most people lack discipline is because we're used to playing by other people's rules. We'll have discipline when it comes to getting to class on time, getting to work on time, getting projects done and getting homework done. But when it comes to things that impact ourselves, that's where our discipline lacks. Bro, why do you think it's so hard for people to stick to a diet or a workout? It's the same exact reason that people struggle sticking to a budget. The same exact reason that people struggle sticking to their New Year's resolutions. It's easy to do what everyone else wants you to do, especially when you realize that you have the pressure of a multitude of people. So you got your teachers, your mom, your grandparents, your dad, even your friends. But when it comes to you doing something for yourself that's going to make your life better, usually all you have is you. You don't have anybody putting pressure on you. And if you're not used to putting pressure on yourself, then no wonder it's difficult. When I started this YouTube channel, I had a very hard time staying consistent because no one was putting pressure on me and, and by, besides myself. All I had was me. And sometimes I would give myself excuses like, you know what? You're you're tired today. Don't even worry about posting a video. They'll, they'll be all right. You know what I'm saying? And that's a bad mentality to have. But you better believe when I went to college, there were no excuses because I already knew that I had pressure from a multitude of people who were expecting me to come out of there with a degree. You get what I'm saying? There was no expectation of me creating a YouTube. There was nothing that says Reggie has to have a YouTube channel. The only person that said that was me. You get it? See, everyone's pushing you to do everything they want you to do, but how many people are pushing you to get on your purpose? I didn't even start to think about my purpose in life until like a full year after I graduated from college. Look, check this out right here. You see this book right here. If you can't see it, it's called The Purpose Driven Life. You see, this is the book that changed my entire perspective as it related to pursuing my purpose in life. You know something? This was actually a graduation gift. Like the moment I graduated from college, that was when I got this book. And you know, since I was a professional procrastinator, I waited a full year until I read this book. And that's one of the things that I actually regret. And look, this was so much more than just getting on my purpose. This was improving myself as a man every single day. It was getting that confidence, getting smarter, getting stronger. And the product of all of that was getting more money. But instead of being asked, what is your purpose in life? You're asked, what are you going to school for? What is your occupation? What are you studying? No, outside of that, what is your meaning on earth? The thing is, as a society, we're more impressed with people living out this dream of getting married right after college, and there's nothing wrong with that. But as I say in my Money and Relationships video, most people aren't ready for a girlfriend or a boyfriend, much less a marriage. 
And what happens is you end up spending all this money on a wedding because, you know, weddings can't just be reasonable and normal and affordable. No, 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 no. They have to be completely extravagant. They have to have top of the line elegance, despite the fact that they only last a few hours if you're including the reception. <sighs> Let me calm down. In the U.S. alone, the average wedding cost is just under $34,000. And when you consider the fact that most people nowadays get married between the ages of 25 and 30, you can pretty much guarantee that they're not done paying off their student loans yet. And I'm not saying that that's required to get married. That's not what I'm saying at all. But what I am saying is this, it's going to add additional debt. And it's because of this one thing that society gives us, and it's what I like to call the euphoria of Disney. And it's exactly the thing that causes most young couples to get married and have an over-the-top wedding and spend several thousands of dollars just because of what they grew up seeing on TV. Don't even get me started on the fact that most of these marriages don't even last. And that's not me being pessimistic or anything. That's just facts. Look up the statistics. And you know what? Divorces ain't cheap either. So now we're searching how to get out of debt how to get out of debt with no money, how to save money, how to save money on a low income. And then one day it hit me. The real question isn't how to get out of debt, but how to get out of debt in the fastest way possible. That's what they want to know. They want to know what is the fastest way possible to get out of debt. How can I get out of debt as soon as possible? That's what they want to know. And they ask it as if there's some sort of a magic pill that's going to answer their question. And I'm here to tell you, there is no magic pill that's going to fast track you out of debt. You're not going to wake up one morning and your debt just goes poof. That's not how it works. You can't just do one thing and then your debt is completely gone. I take that back. You actually can, but it requires your time, your effort, your resilience, and your determination. Listen up. The only way you can fast track your way out of debt is by focusing on increasing your income, which requires you to do what I said earlier and focus on your purpose. Focusing on your purpose adds more value to more people, which makes you more valuable, which makes you more money. Usually people don't want to hear all that, though, because it's a lot of work and not everybody needs to do that. And I get it. You know what I'm saying? I will be the first one to tell you that it's not for everybody. But that's true. It's the That is the fastest way to get out of debt. There's literally no other way that you can get out of debt in the quickest way possible. You have to look at all the variables. Let's see. I make this much. I owe this much, so I need to increase over here so I can pay all of this off. It's common sense. That's the only way that you can fast track your way out of debt. Increase your income. And you know what else? That's also the quickest way to save as much money as possible by increasing your income. So you know what? I'm just going to stop right there. The, if you want more feasible ways to learn how to earn more income, just go watch my side hustle videos because I go in depth on specific things that you can do right now to increase your income. Now... The key is to stay out of debt. I don't want you typing in the search bar how to get out of debt anymore. You see, we already know how to get out of debt. And there's a few strategies. There's the snowball method and there's the avalanche method. But those are great. You know what I'm saying? Those are both perfectly fine strategies. But we both know, we both know that neither one of them are going to fast track you out of debt. They're not going to put you in to hyperspeed and just go and delete all of your debt. That's just not going to happen. If it did, we would all have zero debt. You get what I'm saying? The way you stay out of debt is by keeping your emotions out of your financial decisions as much as possible. You've got to think logically about everything you're doing financially, and you need to think about how what you're doing right now is going to affect you in the future. Facts. Anyways, that's the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Stay cold.